Welcome <laughs> to community call number six. This one we weren't really sure if we would make. Um, it is the first call after a schedule change. This is our first call on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'm glad everyone made it out tonight. Um, I'm at the East Acre House at East Denver and uh, with a bunch of good friends, but we had hoped to all be in the same, like kind of sitting around the same table. And Sam and Michael did heroic efforts to make that work out, but the sound just didn't come together. So we're all in the same house, kind of like in different places. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really like up in the stairwell trying to hide away from everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm in some kind of, it feels like the attic. I'm not really sure where I am, but um, we don't have a really great agenda tonight. And the reality is that we weren't really sure if we'd be able to pull this call together in time. Uh, and we sort of the afternoon. Hey, Nolan. Yeah, so anyway, um, we have a little bit of a different cast uh, and we're just going to do this. I'm climbing into a tub in what I believe is the attic. Oh, it's going to be a good one. I think I'm very inclined tonight to, so I, I normally do this with a couple screens where I can see everything at once. I can tell you, we should talk about POEP at ETH Denver. Um, hey, Logic Beach, you want to tell us a little bit about your experience of like what you're seeing regarding POEP at ETH Denver? Logic Beach is muted. Um, Mr. Mojo? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to listen. What's up? You forgot to listen? Yeah, it wasn't a conversation. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I'm, am I the only one like up here by myself? Um, I was saying, what, what has your experience with POAP at East Denver been like? Um, literally everybody that I have ran into gives me a POAP for meeting them, and that's a lot of fun because that's one of the main reasons we came out here was to give out the You Met Us POAP, and we're getting everybody else's You Met Us POAP. <laughs> It adds a that lot of value awesome. to the event just to be able to get POAPs. That's why we came. How many would you say that you've run into? Sometime in like March. 20 or so? That's so awesome. And well, yeah. you kind of, you and Britain kind of like, I've been on a mission to like explore the whole scene. Um, Absolutely. Um, <laughs> we're out here also promoting like my puzzle and stuff. So being able to have an in, like if you have a POAP to give somebody, they're like, they want to talk to you. Like, whoa, whoa you have a POAP? You must be like interesting, right? So <laughs> it's a really good intro to conversations uh, like instantly. So like we've met a lot of interesting people this way. You said, whoa, you have a POAP, and whoa does have a POAP. I just got it from him a few minutes ago. <laughs> I'm literally holding them in my hand, and I'm looking at them. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking shit about you, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Mojo, you're kind of new to the scene. This is your first, like, big event. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Like the first thing I did when I got to the East Staker house was win POAP, like literally. It was like, hey, everybody, it's me, Mojo. Okay, POAP now. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Superfizz can confirm that too. He was right there. I was, I, I was pretty much like looking over the whole table. I was like, hey, everyone, it's great to meet you. I know you guys have POAPs. You better pull them out right now. Let me have them. So, <laughs> and uh, Sam was like, well, if you really want a POAP, here you go, and he pulled up his QR code, and uh, and I just thank you. <laughs> and then uh, it's kind of funny because we're, we're meeting people face to face that we've known for a couple of years, and instead of like, so maybe we do a hug or shake hands or whatever, but then it's like, quick, let's drop the formalities and let's get our poaps out. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, it's kind of like the thing that even if you don't know much, you can still go out and you can be like, okay. I know what POAPs are. I can get my POAP. I can claim it. I'm okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to be too in depth in the scene to understand how to get a POAP and use it. So it, it's pretty cool to have that bonding connection with everyone. Is anyone else in the audience um, at, po at ETH Denver now? If, if you are, feel free to uh, raise your hand and we'll bring you on as a speaker and you can tell us kind of what you've observed. Uh, 
it, it is really surprising to me the pervasiveness of POAP. Um, it, it's one of those things where in the beginning, uh, we sort of had to like encourage products to adopt POAP. And now it's very much like things I've never heard of are sharing POAP. So uh, I, I just find that really exciting. What's up, RPL Grime? How are you? Hey, how's it going? Sorry, I actually, I actually kind of cheated because I'm not actually in Denver, but I wanted to ask you guys if you met my teammates. I I have actually laid pretty low um, as like an honest, true confession. I haven't been out of the house in two years. And so uh, my normal, <laughs> like, I'm excited to meet people. I'm I'm feeling a little shy. So I've really stuck around the East Acre house most of the time. All right. I'll send those guys over there. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're accepting visitors. Oh, Grime, uh, this is Grey Wizard, aka Sam from Poap. So I did talk to Looking for Owls, and we're looking to meet up with him a little bit later after this today. Oh, great! Oh, yeah, Chris is here, and is he going to the uh, to the meet and the what is it, the happy hour after this? He's going to go over to the Get Poap meet and greet uh, event, and we're looking forward to going to that right after this as well. Yeah, can't wait. Oh. Y'all would not believe I'm literally in like a jacuzzi tub. Like I'm not, there's no water in it. I'm just, I'm in this tiny room. I just snorted. Um, but yeah, so I think the big takeaway is we're seeing the kind of adoption from East Denver that we really believed was possible with POAP. It's kind of like that thing where if you're an early Ethereum adopter, like you believe in the product, but you don't really know if or when it's it's gonna kind of like catch fire. Uh, and then, you know, you get like, we go from like $12 to $200 and you're like, holy cow, this is real, it's really gonna happen. I think East Denver 2022 is that real experience for POAP uh, that holy cow, it's really gonna happen. And I would, I'd say there was the, uh, the Binance thing and we should talk about that on uh, the Super Bowl. I don't really know a lot about that, um, but I do know what happened. Can someone tell me what that is? Um, yeah, I can explain this a little bit. So whenever I was looking into it, essentially it was this sort of awareness campaign with some celebrities where a lot of these, um, I guess I should say like mainstream crypto commercials that were being played during the Super Bowl, it's just basically people and celebrities coming up being like, oh yeah, use our platform, buy whatever coin that we offer. Which I mean, okay, cool and all, like, don't get me wrong, I love ETH and everything, and I, I purchase it and hold it, don't get me wrong, but there is some sense of like, hey, you have to be responsible, and you need to know what you're doing before you really decide to jump in. It's kind of just like a like risk awareness type of thing, and essentially it was, oh, if you see some celebrity shilling a like like a certain corporation or whatever, I don't want to name names, hit this button and we'll give you a Poe app. And that's what it was about. It had like Jimmy Butler on it and everything. And it was basically like uh, do your own research or like, you know, I'm not going to tell you financial advice type of thing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I think the big win there is... Um... Uh, for me, there are really two big wins. It's it's Binance using POAP, which is a, a first big win, and then using a POAP on such a stage as large as the Super Bowl. I think, and I'm sorry, I'm not a football fan. I know that everyone else in the world is, but that's probably the most watched sporting event of the year. Um, and to see, number one, a cryptocurrency company, I know Binance and Coinbase both had ads on the Super Bowl, uh, and then to see one of them using POAP in that ad is just that's, I don't think any of us could have imagined that um, even like six months ago. At least I wouldn't have. And I, I'm pretty close to POAP. Uh, I, I just wouldn't have imagined that. Uh, who, who uh, I, I just caught the end of that. Who used a POAP in the Super Bowl? I did, as, as I understand. Oh, uh -huh, cool. 
See, I didn't get to see the whole thing. I saw like the tail end of it, but I heard about the Coinbase one. Uh, awesome. I think awesome. really want to talk about. And, and so, so Colfax is not here. Colfax is offline. He's getting ready for um, a Git POAP event that's going to start right after this call. Um, but well, and I guess you guys in the house have been using this. I I just kind of got here, but I'm, I want to talk about the ways that POAPs are being distributed at ETH Denver, um, because really what we're looking for is this. Uh, one to one distribution uh, of POAPs and the the couple of main ones that I've seen. Uh, well, how about people can talk about the way that they're doing it. I'm doing it what I think is probably the most inefficient way. I um, I love the cards that I had printed. Sleety helped me with those. Sleety Beetles from the at least that's uh, and that's not his correct screen name, but that's how I reference him from Poapathon. I went to poapathon.com. I went through the prompts and uh, offered some design for my Poap, and then he actually helped me get those printed. And so when I'm distributing Poaps, I'm giving people a what looks like a coaster, uh, like a drink coaster, maybe a little smaller, and then they can scan the QR code on that. And the, the issue with that is Poaps are really about the digital icon and our digital NFT and not so much about the physical collectible. But the people who I give those to are then stuck with this coaster and they're like, do I give it back to you? Do I throw it away? Do I keep it? Uh, and so that's that's great education for me that in the future, I really don't need a physical token of the NFT to hand out. Um, people are really just interested in the digital collectible. There are a lot of other ways that people are using to distribute them. Does somebody want to speak up about those? I just learned about uh qr.poapp.tech i think um and that was a really cool way i've actually seen people using this and what it will do is you give it your links that you get in the email and it produces like a swipeable list of qr codes on your phone so you can like like for every new person that you meet you can just show them that code once they do it you can swipe it away and then it goes to the next one that's a new thing to me i've not seen that till today i'd love for you to message me that um but also include it in the uh, community chat, if you can. We're, we're all on our phones right now, yeah, it. and we're used to using probably bigger screens. But that does sound like a neat distribution method. So that's is that is that what Nolan is using? Oops. Oh my God. <laughs> I think so. I, I've I've seen at least two people at this East Staker house doing that. Okay. I didn't know how they were generating those. Nolan, how was your setup experience with that? I'm just using the regular co-op website. I'm I'm sorry, your audio was a little bit rough. That's fine. Um, go ahead. So, <laughs> you're I I see you muting and unmuting, so I'm not sure if if you are going to be able to share that or not. I'm just using the regular co-op website. Yeah, you're using the regular POAP website to distribute them. Um, there's also, we've kind of been talking about this product for a few weeks, and it's the first time I've ever seen it. It's IYK, uh, and some of you might know uh, IYK, or you might recognize the abbreviation IYKYK, um, which is if you know, you know. And so there's an NFT distribution platform called IYK. What's up, Wo? How are you? Uh, Whoa, just joined me up in the, the banishment room. Uh, but anyway, IYK uses, um, it, you have to mute that because if I hear my voice and I'm like, oh, stop talking. <laughs> uh, IYK uses NFT uh, and you essentially program what looks like a little sphere, uh, not a sphere, a little platter, uh, maybe a, like a five inch disc. And then you just hold your NFC by your, your phone's NFC by that. And it transmits a unique code to claim that POAP. That's one of the most novel distribution ways that I've seen this week. Yeah, after seeing the uh, IYK, I'm sold on it. I got to get one. I want to sew it into my um, Logic Beach head or something. So I'm just like, hold your phone up to my face. Hey, so uh, Wo is up here with me. I think his audio might not be working, but uh, he wants to talk about his POG distribution. And... I'm excited about this. I, I know Wo from the Rocket Pool Discord where I hang out too much, um, and I've seen these images, but I'm really excited to hear about how they work out. So 
I was following Poapathon pretty close from, from when, where they started. And um, one of the things that I thought was neat was they started the POG, um, I guess, events for ETH Denver where everybody could submit designs and, and create POGs for handing out to people who come here. So uh, I talked to Tap about it and I was like, you know, I think it'd be cool if, you know, I, I made some POGs on my own. And he, he said, you know, I could use the, uh, Poapathon logo, so I went and designed my own uh, Poaps, which I then printed to Pogs, um, had those created and sent to me, and then I took um, my claim links from Poap and I put them in uh, Google Sheets, and you can use a formula in Google Sheets to, to create a, a QR code, and then I took those QR codes and printed them um, onto label, little peelable stickers, and slapped each of those onto each of my pogs. So that way when I hand out um, a pog to someone, it has my pog, the POAP design, plus the QR code for an individual claim link to the POAP. And I love the theme behind this, the <laughs> January 22 survivor. Um, that's when, uh, if you're following the price of Ethereum, I think we dunked to 2200. Um, and of course everyone sold because we're not gonna make it. Uh, I hope you did anyway. but. Having seen this design online and then coming here and receiving it as a physical POAP, it, it's already like one of my most prized possessions. So I'm glad you shared it. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if we can talk enough about uh, TAP and POAPathon. Uh, I hoped he would join us. I know he's here at East Denver, but I'm sure he's doing something else. Uh, but they are, uh, you know, Woe talked about these pogs and um, TAP from Poapathon has is setting up a whole big uh, cryptog or what a cryptogs rebranded, reloaded, yeah, rebooted, rebooted. Uh, but that's going live. I think he said tonight. And so if you have a what is the, what are the Poap you have to have or the NF? You, it's a Poap you have to have from the Pog packets that he's creating. I actually have some, so I'm bringing those to the get Poap part. Uh, listen, yeah, so if you have one of those, is there any other way to get them? Do you have to be here? So you have to be at an event at ETH Denver. He okay. has so many of these Pog packets that he's created. Yeah. Like, and he's he's distributing them to the- 2,500? Something like that. And and he's distributing them across to a bunch of different events. Okay. And it's, the difficult thing is it's hard to know really who in the audience is at ETH Denver right now, um, but, uh, you know, what really all we can talk about is what we know. And it's really exciting to see, ah, oh, yes, ETH Denver series. Um, why is, oh, I was like, why is my icon up there? It's because my fat butt is talking. Um, that is awesome. So if you have one of those PO apps, uh, I know that there's a, a staged kind of minting of these, and I believe they're free to mint, uh, but it is kind of a really neat new... Uh, improvement of the Poapathon uh, concept. And so Austin Griffith developed, Austin Griffith and a partner, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it is, developed Cryptogs uh, a couple of years ago, and then Tap.E found that and revitalized the project. So I think it's really cool. Um, Logic Beach and Brittany, I know you guys have a bunch of cool uh, Poap projects going on. I the things that come to mind are the make the world a better place and the Tuesday puzzle. Do you guys want to talk about those? Uh, I can speak to. Wait, what am I doing again? Oh yeah, you know I have like a, a puzzle coming up, and there is a Poap hidden inside of it. Um, uh, I love doing that hiding a Poap. You know, that's most of the Poaps you get from Logic Peach are like you solved a puzzle part. So, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about uh, make the world a better place? <laughs> I can try to say a few things. <laughs> yeah. She's sitting here right with me. Um, this is Britton.eth. Uh, she uh, manages uh, Make the World a Better Place. So, yeah, tell them what it's all about. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so Make the World a Better Place is um, it's a project where every month I have a new challenge. <clears throat> and if you complete the challenge, you get a POAP. So this month, uh, the challenge is to take a picture of your reusable water bottles that you use. <laughs> And put some sort of time, some kind of timestamp in the photo, and um, you'll get an awesome po app that we designed. Yeah. Um, um, last month, just to give you guys a, a more fleshed out picture, uh, what did we do for January? That was that was reusable, reusable bags. grocery bags. Um, the month also, before that yeah. was, uh, I think it was cleaning up litter. 
Yeah, and there's also a year-long one that we're calling NF trees. So like if you plant a tree, uh, we want to see like a timestamp and then like the breed the or the species of tree. Yeah, yeah that one lasts all year. Um, yeah, but definitely um, we expect to, and if you guys have any ideas of other um, things that make the world a better place that we can create as like an actionable, uh, what would you call this, doable, that we can give pop-up stuff for, please reach out to us. You know, we, we brainstorm about this stuff a lot, so we love any and all input. Yeah, definitely open to more ideas. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, I, I get really excited about those POEPs, but I also, um, I, this is not intended as constructive feedback, it's just my personal experience. Like I get excited about it, like the last one was the water bottle challenge, and I'm like, I'm really gonna do that. And then I kind of forget. Um, I'm kind of curious how much participation you're having. Is it what you expected, or did you think maybe there would be more or less? This month specifically, the water bottles, uh, because that is simple and easy and most people have a reusable water bottle, I'm getting a lot more uh, feedback on that one for sure. The grocery bags, not so much. Um, I think it kind of just depends on how how easy it is for the people to complete the task. To that, I, I definitely get more feedback if it's an easier yeah. task. I think that That's the, cool. The... It seems like if it's, if it's easily within reach, um, it definitely increases the likelihood. Like the planting a tree one, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to plant a tree maybe in the future. Um, mm -hmm. But when it came to the water bottle one, I, I was so confident, like I can definitely do this. I'll still do this, uh, like even tonight, because it it is such a a welcoming bar to entry. Yeah, and everyone who came to East Denver has no excuse not to do that because <laughs> they got a water bottle as they entered yeah. East Denver. So, yeah, that's an easy one. Everybody has water bottles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to mention, actually, I have no idea what I was going to say. Yep. So, East Denver, um, I'm, I'm here racking my brain for what we haven't talked about yet. One of the things I'm seeing most of are um, recruiters looking for, looking to hire all kinds of positions. And we know that Web3 is growing exponentially. And so we're kind of like any event that I've gone to, and frankly, I haven't been to a lot, I've kind of laid low. Um, it's like recruiters are saying things like, if if you're aware of enough of the space to wind up in this room, then we want to hire you. And I, I just find that absolutely hilarious because, you know, I I don't I don't think of myself as very knowledgeable or like very hireable in Web3. And then you know I walk into places and they're like, we if if you made it this far, then then we probably want to hire you. Uh, and so when I look at some of these companies who have like 200 million dollar raises. Then they have, you know, 200 employees they've hired in the past six weeks or whatever. It just amazes me the amount of opportunity available right now. That's that's probably the thing that stands out to me most right now. Where's me a co-host? Mr. Mojo, what you got, buddy? Please. Yeah, sure. I think we can look at the slide up. Give me one second. I'm going to pull it up. What are you looking at? Slide up. Yeah, yeah, slide up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let me get it pulled up real fast. All right. So I'm looking up here really at the very, that. very top. Pretty that's good question. Right no water we're so it looks like on the Slido, yeah, our top question at the moment is, where will Poat be after five years? So uh, any any opinions on where we believe Poat is going to be in five years? Nolan, I don't know what you're doing, but I always value your ability to make good sense out of these things. Um, where do you predict POAP in five years? Um, I think it's going to be massive. I mean, when I was waiting the seven minutes or whatever it took to get my COVID test, um, I was standing with Torsten and three strangers. And we were all just kind of standing around chatting. And I, I threw my QR code up and I said, hey, claim my PO app. To people that like I literally just met and none of them even second guessed it. They knew exactly what it was, like scan the QR code, claim the PO app. So I think it's, it's getting huge traction, at least amongst the people that are willing to come to Denver. And I think it's only going to continue to grow. And I think I'm excited for PO app to maybe 
I mean, I would love them as a uh, event ticketing solution. I mean, I know I have like old ticket stubs that I've saved as a memento. So having a PO app for a concert I went to or a, some sort of sports event. Yeah, I think it's a exponential growth for many years. That's what I see. Um, I also have a prediction. I think that a lot of like restaurants and other different companies that have, what do they call these? Um, uh, you know how you get the little piece of paper and they stamp t uh, 10 holes on it or whatever? Uh, what'd you call it? Loyalty programs. Yeah, loyalty programs. Yeah, there was a, a, a restaurant in California. They were talking on Poapathon about how they were using Poaps for their loyalty program. I, can, I think the name's something strange, like Chow Chow Piadina. Um, but yeah, I, I could imagine it becoming something like that because it, it literally is proof of attendance. Like, oh, you came here 10 times, you know, here's your free whatever. And especially start to see it more as, as tickets as time goes on. Um, yeah, I was really excited to hear about the loyalty program use of it because I thought that was uh, a really good fit. Yeah, and I'm seeing... I see companies building on POAP, which kind of tells you that like they're more of a fundamental building block than you expected. Like IYK is one example, and they're not building anything. Yeah. They're extending POAP, not building in a different direction. They're giving more value to POAP, and that's one angle. But then you have something like Get POAP, um, Colfax's project, which is doing more than just extending POAP. It's also bridging it to open source software development. Um, and whenever you see, whenever I see a platform or what I might consider a, you know, a crypto primitive, when I see it extending into other, uh, other areas of cryptographic growth or cryptocurrency growth, then it gives me a strong sense that they're doing something right. Uh, and just seeing like the amount of integration between POAP and other projects uh, really inspires me. Uh, there's something else I wanted to, uh, what was I gonna hit? I don't know, I'll, I'll think of it in just a moment. So one of the things I, I think is interesting is just like the demand, like how many people want POAPs, like when POAP, right? Um, and one of the things I think is, is pretty funny is I have, I think one of the third most minted POAPs of all time. It was the POAP um, and Rocket Pool crossover event, something like 20,000 mints. Now, I would suspect 99% of that was uh, farmed, but even, you know, for people to want to farm co-apps just shows like how much, you know, people want these things and it can only grow more in the future. Yeah, the commitment to farming is, is <laughs> I think I think people get the idea there's, there's going to be some kind of future economic value to those. And to be honest with you, I'm not, I, I'm kind of pessimistic about high future economic potential for any POAP that has been farmed. Uh, and so essentially, if, some, if there are 20,000 claims, it sort of reduces the value of each one. But for things that are like fair distributions, so for example, the ETH Denver POAPs uh, are a great example. And I don't know if I've actually gotten a POAP uh, specific event this year. Uh, maybe it'll come an email, I'm not really sure. But the historical ETH Denver POAPs are, have been, they're, they're a quality distribution. Um, and I, I feel like even though I'm not, I'm not long on individual POAPs having value, I do feel like some of those hold a lot of personal value. Did, did you know where, where the... You get them at registration. There's a little card with the POAP on the back. What? Did you miss it? I did. Go I've already I've already annoyed registration one time. Um. <laughs> I can tell you that one of the things about sentimental value is uh, POAP actually got me to stake. So one of the things when I when when it was December was it like November December 2020 when the Beacon Chain was coming online I was kind of like do I want to do this do I not want to do this I mean I always wanted to stake but when they have that POAP come out I was like I have to do this to get the POAP. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. Um, and actually, the the guy who did, in my mind, some of the most work on that is uh, Nolan Lamboshi, who's who's here with us. He um, didn't you come up with the way to compress the addresses and add add them in, and and then uh, our other friend Buddha, who's not here from Beacon Chain, uh, helped us get set up on Beacon Chain to distribute those. Uh, 
how was your experience with that Lemboshi? Do you remember that much? Yeah, that was really fun. And then that was uh, before the days of the farmers. So I think that one was minimally farmed. Um, yeah, those are really cool. Minimally farmed? What are you talking about? I, was, I farmed the daylights out of that. No, I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, okay. that, that's maybe, just you. Maybe I have too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no those are my favorite poaps i would say yeah i love um so there's the madasha launch poap and then each client has a poap um and i i recall that lodestar wasn't quite on the network but there were still a lot of people who not a lot but there were like three people who somehow mysteriously claimed it and were like oh we got your number yeah, I wanted to rug them out of all of the Madasha Pro apps, but you talked me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it might it might be fun sometime to do a a historical overview of Pro app. Um, I know that there's been some discussion about that. Is it is isn't there an official uh, historian hired now? I don't know if they filled that position yet. Uh, Sam's shaking his head. No, they have not. Oh, okay. Right. Well, that's actually a great opportunity. Um, maybe I should apply for that. So, um, I, if you look at, and, and sorry, I don't remember the domain name off the top of my head. The Squanch can actually fill us in on that hiring domain, and I, I, I can talk about it or he can. Do you want to go ahead? I don't see him unmuting, but if he unmutes, I'll shut up. Um, but you can, uh, Poep is hiring, I want to say, I, like 20 or 30 open positions the last time that I looked at their hiring page. Um, and there are a lot of different positions that aren't necessarily technical. Uh, obviously, they're looking for engineers and developers, but there are a lot of other positions. And the one that really catches my eye is that historian position, because things are moving so quickly with POAP. And so I know most about it from the East Acre angle, but if you look at Decentraland, there are so many PO apps issued into Central Land. And so there really needs to, and that's, there's another, there's Rocket Pool. Rocket Pool has like 70 PO apps just of like, uh, just about Thomas G specifically. Uh, not really, but most of them are about Thomas G. Um, so the idea of a PO app historian is someone who uh, kind of gathers all of this history and documents it in a healthy way. I know that. Uh, I, I think it was Hanny developed a a, po -app, a curated list of the Rocket Pool poaps that I thought was really cool. Uh, but the idea of a poap historian really really speaks out to me. If you have a chance to go find, again, it's it's going to be probably like poap.xyz slash something. Um, you should go and I bet it's going to be careers.poap.xyz. I'm making that up. Uh, but there are so many valuable positions open. Even if you don't think that poap employment is right for you, at least scroll through those because there's that 5% chance that something's going to jump out and you're going to be like, holy cow, I've been looking for this for months. Well, what you got, Whoa? You're right. Careers.poap.xyz. Ah, I uh, totally called it. Careers.poap.xyz. And, and speaking of Thomas G, I'm uh, hoping somebody makes uh, a new poap to commemorate that, that scam that he narrowly avoided because that was uh, an amazing story. Yeah, there was, um, I thought I saw a design for that, didn't I? Maybe. Yeah, so <laughs> um, one of the interesting things to me are communities who have adopted POAP the most. I know that Decentraland is one of them, uh, ETH Staker and, and Rocket Pool, um, and CoinGecko. Uh, what, are, what are some other, and even if, if you're in the audience and you want to raise your hand, Poapathon has yeah has totally taken Poap to a new level. What are other communities that really use Poaps a lot? No other ideas. It's so funny because well, I, I see I, um, like, like uh, hundreds well, of minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, there's this one. I guess uh, this one DAO that I was in for like a little bit, whenever it first came out, it was Open DAO. It was the SOS airdrop uh, from Christmas time, and um, for their snapshots, they would give PO apps for people who voted in their snapshots. Uh, I was also thinking 
Bankless is a huge uh, POAP user. You get, if you subscribe to the Bankless letter, uh, you get a, uh, oh yeah, yeah. You, if you subscribe to Bankless, you get their POAP and I don't know if they're still doing it, but for a long time they were using POAP.fun to give away swag, um, which I thought is a really novel use. If you don't know about, oh shoot, we were going to do that POAP fun raffle tonight. Um, hey, so here's the thing. Uh, I think, I think there's a POAP raffle uh, or POAP fun raffle. And I think the number of that raffle is 1148. Um, and I haven't said this yet in this call, but we, here's my my trick. We plan to offer a POEP for participating in this call, but we are on a shoestring. And so we we barely pulled it together. Um, and so I, the good news is next week and in the future calls will be more organized, but doing this from East Denver on the fly is kind of difficult. Um, but DeFi dude, gave me the walkthrough for setting up the POAP bot and I attempted to do that. So I believe about two minutes after this call ends, you'll be able to go to the community, nope, nope, to the POAP claim channel and then type, don't do it now, please don't do it now, you're gonna do it now. That, that channel may not even be open, but it is slash claim. Yep, slash POAP space claim. Slash POAP space claim. I don't even know how to do it. Um, I love DGEN though. And uh, a lot of people do exclamation claim or exclamation POAP, and that's just incorrect, and it really ends up being spam. But in that POAP-claim channel that may or may not be visible, I don't know, I'm on mobile right now, uh, you'll be able to go there and maybe, maybe not, you'll be able to type slash POAP space claim and get a response from the DGen bot telling you that you earned a POAP. Uh, here's the flip side of that. Uh, I've been very transparent that um, this call has been maybe a little difficult for us to put on, even though we felt very committed to doing it. So if the POAP bot doesn't work, or if you don't get a POAP, uh, I hope you'll just forgive us and come back next week. Uh, we, we do intend to offer a POAP, but uh, you know, if it doesn't work, please don't give us a hard time. We, we really are doing our best to, uh, to provide that for your benefit. Um, we said bankless, or, oh, EY, uh, I don't know, EY used to be Ernst Young, they are a financial institution, uh, or they do audits um, and accounting. There's a guy called Paul Brody, uh, you ought to follow him on Twitter, it's P. Brody. Um, he is, I know him best from a talk he gave two years ago called Depth and Scale. Uh, you can Google, uh, YouTube it, it's uh, EY Depth and Scale, or Blockchain Depth and Scale. If you have time to drive and listen to that call or that talk, I've listened to it like six times because it really blows my mind for the potential of, um, of Ethereum. But uh, EY gives out a lot of POAPs and I'm not e exactly sure like what the claim process is, but I do see a lot of filings. So they do like at, if they have a conference and you attend a session, they'll have individual POAPs with a, with a QR code that you can scan if you attend the the session, in the session will be the QR code. So only people who are in the session can see the QR code and then scan it and claim it. And their, their conferences are open, like they're in New York and they announce it and you can just kind of go for, a, they're, I think they're on a, like a Friday usually. You can just spend a Friday um, learning about Ethereum and how EY integrates it. You might not think it has a lot to do with you, but um, I've watched those calls and, and I, I definitely feel engaged in every one of them. Unless anyone else has anything awesome to bring up, uh, I think we may wrap it up because we're going to go visit uh, Colfax's happy hour. It's not really Colfax. It's him and, and two other partners. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't recall who they are. Um, Privy. Privy and Violet. Violet. They are, um, I guess, co-businesses co with, uh, with Gitpo app. Does anyone have really anything they'd like to share? I'm, I'm very open to it right now. All right, so well, I'm well, going hold, to... Hold on, Superfiz. It takes me a second to unmute. Um, we can do uh, another okay. Slido question if we want, or we can go ahead and wrap up. Yeah, let's, let's hit. Uh, so I would like to run until 50 after the hour. I think that's, um, that's probably fair. So let's look at those uh, one or two of the Slido questions. Sure. So give me one second to pull it back up again. So this one isn't specifically at the top, but I think it fits in and kind of what we do here, trying to give best practice tips and uh, curation advice, things like that. 
So there's this question that says, is it possible to set an expiration date for a PO app so that its holder can use the special features set for it at the specified time? I think what it's trying to ask is, um, can you give special properties to a PO app for a limited amount of time? I think that's what it's trying to ask. Or is so there any way to a, kind of make that possible? Well, so most of that would be a third party extension. Uh, and a great example of that, um, what was I? Uh, there is already a platform that, oh, oh it's uh, Lit. The Lit protocol uses, um, uses uh, POAP integration to enable Zoom calls for POAP holders. And so that's really a basic POAP integration. So essentially, if your developer can scan somebody's Web3 wallet um, for the presence of a POAP, then they can also read the metadata for that POAP and determine whether or not someone is eligible to participate in a way that they want them to. So essentially, if uh, let's say that I'm a restaurant owner and I give out a PO app um, to my, my customer base. I could very easily, but so you would need a, a developer, but my developer could say anyone who has had this PO app for a year gets a 10% discount on their meal. And all that person would need to do would, would be to, to, sh to show their uh, Web3 wallet. So essentially they would, they would have a, uh, they would scan their address at the restaurant. The restaurant would scan for the QR, uh, for the PO app and tell the restaurant when it was claimed and then it could easily take 10% off their bill. Those integrations are really possible, but they're not integrations that PO app would do. They are third party integrations. Yes, one, one thing that PO Yep, it looks like we sure did lose him. But all right, everybody, since we were gonna wrap up soon anyway, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the initiative to do that. Let's see here. I do believe if you go over to the uh, POAP claim channel, if you type that slash claim, it should work. Crossing my fingers that it's set up correctly. Let's take well, a look. Oh, well, he, he's, yeah. back. he's back. He's back. He's yeah, back. Sorry, sorry. If I exit the application to go back in, it won't work yet, but we will wrap up the call. I have to go and um, actually actually end the DGEN bot listening session. Um, and after I end that, then I have to upload codes. Um, but, and, and like I said, please don't be offended if it doesn't work because, uh, you know, we're winging it. But if you give it about five minutes, uh, I'll end the call in just a moment and then give me, realistically, give me five or 10 minutes. Uh, and if it doesn't work, just say, okay, no big deal. Um, please don't call, uh, you know, contact us and say it didn't work because we're going to be very aware. Um, but yeah, in about five or 10 minutes, go to the POAP claims channel and type slash POAP space claim. Uh, and if it did work, you'll get one. And if it doesn't, uh, I apologize. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. It, it will be a little bit more organized, uh, even though honestly, I still have fun. I did too much talking tonight, but I had a, a great time with you guys. Uh, anybody else with anything last to add before we end the call and shut down DGEN? All right. Uh, thanks for your call. I'm going to hop out of the empty, dry hot tub and go um, see if I can close up DGEN. And so, uh, again, we're doing these calls every Wednesday night at, I believe it's 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're on Mountain Time now, but I think that's right. Uh, and we appreciate your attendance. So uh, take care. Bye-bye.